I'm Jeff. I'm going to talk to you about the different components and parts of the beaver board that stand up paddleboard. First of all, this black part is a deck pad. This is where you stand. There's many different positions you can stand on it, but we'll talk about that later in the instructional video of how to stand up paddleboard. This board in particular is a 10 foot 6 inch in length board. And it's part of the Beaver Board Stand Up Paddleboard package available exclusively through Canadian tire stores across Canada. This board is 10 foot 6 inches in length and 33 inches in width and 5 inches in thickness. So, the different parts we have up here we have the handle. This is a carry handle, it is off center to allow for different people with different size arms to carry it. If you have shorter arms, you'll notice you'll carry it from this side. And the best way to carry the paddleboard is like this. If you have longer arms, you'll actually use, grab it from the other side. Another important feature in the center of the board is the automatic air breather vent. This is really important to your board. Your board is made out of EPS foam. Kind of like styrofoam, but really high quality and really high density. Like styrofoam, it's comprised mainly of air bubbles. These air bubbles, or I should say the air in the bubbles, heats up as the board heats up. This is, and as the air heats up, the air molecules will expand. Now, the board is covered in several layers of fiberglass and epoxy, and no air is going to escape from there. So what will happen, think of a balloon. If you heat up a balloon, the balloon will expand because the air has no place to go. It's this automatic air breather valve, which is key to keeping good care of your board. There is a Gore-Tex membrane covering a hole that goes right into the board. This Gore-Tex membrane allows for air to be released and prevents water from coming in. It's a good idea, before you go, just take your finger and make certain it's on there tight. Just make certain it's nice and tight because the last thing you want is for the little membrane cap to come off. And if you use this in salt water, take a cup of water and pour it into there after just to clean the salt water out. Now we're going to go to the, the nose of the board. So the nose of the board is a part of the front. And you'll notice there's a certain angle of the board or how much the board curves up. This is called the nose rocker. Now most surfboards have a high nose rocker. It'll come up to about here. The reason for the nose rocker is when you're surfing, you, so when you're surfing you don't catch the nose of your board in the waves as you're going forward. So however with the nose rocker, when you increase the nose rocker, you decrease stability of the board. Because think of a banana. If you start taking a banana out, it's going to make it really unstable. In Canada, we do not have very many waves. We have a lot more ocean, we have a lot more lakes and rivers to paddle on. So what we've done with beaver board is we've decreased the nose rocker just enough so that it increases the stability tenfold. However, it is still great because it allows your board to be able to handle any type of wind chop and even small surfing waves. And this nose rocker is an excellent way that we've found to make the board more stable. The sides of the boards are called the rails. These are the rails. And the rear of the board is called the tail. Now, I'm going to talk a lot about the tail rocker here. Very similar to the nose rocker, in that we've decreased the nose rocker as well, because we don't have to worry too much about catching the nose, sorry, the tail of the board in waves. Now, part of the beaver board package, it comes with this leash. And in the leash, you'll see it comes with a velcro cuff padded with neoprene 
You put that around your ankle. This is a bit of a safety, this is a safety strap just to keep you attached to your board. So you attach this part to your ankle and it's got a rail saver, swivel, uh, leash attachment. Just, it helps to save the rail on the side of the board because as opposed to dragging along the side of your board, it rolls. It's got a convenient coiled leash. And so when you take this out of the package, it, it looks like this. How you attach it, we have two attachment points for your leash. Choose either one, whichever foot you want. If you want to attach the leash to your right foot, put it in the right uh, leash attachment. So how we do it is we undo the Velcro, the triple layer, and we take out the little string, and then just carefully we take the uh, string, and we just feed it through the little leash attachment, and just fold the string through itself. Fold the Velcro back, And there you go, you're fully secured to your board. Now in Canada, Transport Canada has established rules for stand-up paddle boarding and it's all for the safety of the user. If you're between the shoreline and the wave break, so like you're surfing, all you need to wear is a leash. However, once you're past the wave break, so you're not surfing, you're just paddling, you need a life jacket an approved Transport Canada personal flotation device, or a PFD. I recommend uh, one of the inflatable ones. You can get inflatable fanny packs. They just make it a lot more convenient, and if you do have an emergency, you can pull the ripcord, and it'll inflate to a, a personal flotation device. Yeah. So now, we've got the leash. We talked about the handle. We talked about the air bed and the rocker. Let's flip the board over and I want to show you the uh, construction on the bottom. So, if you can notice the curve of the board, there is still a curve. It's just not as curved with the nose and the tail rocker as most surfboards. Again, this is for the stability. Now, we have taken a performance proven hull design that has been around for many years to create a very responsive, high quality paddle board that can be used for beginners to experts alike. What you'll notice on here, on the front, on the front half, front nose of the board, we have decent, we've done used a monoconcave shape. So what happens is it curves downward on the front, creating almost like a catamaran type effect where the front right here is lower than the rails. That is really important for absorbing wind chop and crosswinds chop that we likely see in Canada. Then coming down underfoot, so the center third of the board, it's flat. It's flat underfoot. That creates a very stable standing surface. And then as we move to the back of the board, it merges into a very slight V. And that allows for, uh, so you can go straight running on the board and you have some good control. Now another feature of the board are the fins. The center fin, this is a center fin, this is called a longboard fin, and it goes into the center here. I recommend it before and after use, or after using it, taking them out, because the last thing you want to do is damage your board uh, by hitting something while you're unloading or loading your, your stand-up paddleboard. So your first step, I'll show you how to install them. First thing to do is you have a little square plate attached to the end of a screw. This is a Phillips screw. Try not to lose these because these are integral to it. And then if you take a quick closer look, there, we're going to put them in. And now 
we're going to tighten them back up. And again, they're threaded into the plastic, so we don't want you to over tighten them, but you'll feel when they start tightening up. check. Make sure they don't move around. If you do lose these uh, little set screws, they're easily replaced. So now I'm going to do the other side. Again, back them out. Insert it in, screw it down. Okay, now we're set up. Again, before you go, double check, make sure everything's tight. And you can see with the length of the boards, a good rule of thumb is not to get on your board until it's at least knee deep. That way you'll preserve your boards because if you do step on water, if you do step on the board in very shallow water, they have a tendency of, these may have a tendency of breaking, especially these small side FCS side thrusters. The reason we would rather the fins break than tear out the fin box. We do have replacements available for all, all the fins. So that's uh, the board. If you have any questions, give us a call. Go to our website, beaverboardsup.ca. Thanks.